No holding pens. Oh, was I clicking it? Did you not hear it? <laughs> Maybe because I'm just so used to clicking pens, I just blocked out that sound. I don't have any pens with me. No pens. <laughs> Nothing. Because there were moments where I would be talking and you'd just be like, click, 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 click. Oopsie. Or Carlos with his coffee while you were talking would just be like, with his mugger. With his ice. I'm like, you guys are trying to kill me. Welcome back, guys, for another episode of Control Your Shelf. We are your three favorite book besties. I'm Rose. I'm Carlos. And I'm Lauren. As you guys know from our last episode, today we will be talking about my pick for this episode, which is Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. I would say that this book is probably best described I don't know if this is a term or if I made this up. I'm going to say I made it up. Um, Horrormance. Okay, I think you did make that up. (laughs) It works, it works. Every serial killer needs a friend. Every game must have a winner. When a chance encounter sparks an unlikely bond between rival murderers, Sloane and Rowan, the two find something elusive, the friendship of a like-minded pitch black soul. (laughs) <laughs> from small town West Virginia to upscale California, from downtown Boston to rural Texas, the two hunters collide in an annual game of blood and suffering, one that pits them against the most dangerous monsters in the country. But as their friendship develops into something more, the restless ghosts left in their wake are only a few steps behind, ready to claim more than just their newfound love. Can Rowan and Sloan dig themselves out of a game of graves, or have they finally met their match? Butcher and Blackbird is the first book in the Ruinous Love Dark Romance Trilogy. I love it. It is um, marketed as dark romantic comedy. I would say that that's accurate. So Rose, why did you pick this book? I'm actually curious. Okay, so this is not something that I would normally pick, but Mm -hmm. I only read it because it was popular. I feel like everyone around us was reading it. So I was like... Okay, let me see. Serial killers falling in love. I feel like that what might make me like romance. So I read it and then I had a lot of thoughts about it, but I felt like the people around me were not sharing the same thoughts. So I wanted to oh. know what you guys were thinking. Wait, interesting. Okay. I have a feeling um, I might be the odd one out. So I we'll also have a feeling she's going to be there's just something in my heart that tells me it's going to be 2v1 today. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? It's okay because it just – it's just me, you know? Personal preference. I'm just a little shocked by that though because especially with the way that this book started off, like how mm-hmm. gruesome it was. Like mm-hmm. I opened the book and it's like this grocery list of trigger warnings, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah. okay, I get it. And then the book starts and like just straight from page one, I'm like, oh, okay. yeah. And you, you know, I did. I did love that aspect. Yeah. I just have my my qualms with other things in the book. OK. Mm-hmm. OK. But what, what was everybody's first impression? <laughs> Carlos, did you only audiobook it or did you also physically a little bit? I did both. Yeah. So I bought it on Kindle and I bought it on audio. I started on Kindle first, so I was reading on Kindle first, and then later I got the audio. I kept switching back and forth. Like, I was enthralled by this book. So, like, (laughs) any time that I was even, like, just doing the dishes or something like that, I had the audio book playing. Thank God Ryan was asleep because either it was, like, (laughs) either it was, like, you know, the scene in the the barn or the, the farm or whatever, and I was, like, God, or just sex and i was like Mm -hmm. god please ryan don't don't listen to me (laughs) jeff yo the audio was so good though like that the narration was so good with like the just like the ad-libs that they would add the laughing the sighing it was so good Uh uh-huh the moaning the moaning the grunts and i liked how 
even when it was the guy's POV, they still had the girl yes. talking as yes. the girl instead of the guy being like, and then she mm-hmm. said, oh, no. like it- <laughs> yeah. Or like when they were speaking and they would cut each other off, like the, mm-hmm. the, yes. the audio would overlap. It's so good. Yeah, I really like that. Really well done. It starts with Sloane. I believe it's in her perspective first, right? Yes. She's the woman serial killer. And we get her perspective. She's like next to a rotting corpse. She's locked in a cage. <laughs> I I think she's been in there for at least a day or two, right? It, I don't know how long it's said. Three. I think this was her third day. Third day. Okay. So she's like starving. She doesn't know what's going on. And then a man is walking in and she's like, And it's important to note that, like, this corpse is not just, like, a fresh corpse. You know what I mean? No, he's been there. He'd been there. This was also a horrible man. He, uh, She killed him because he was, like, a pervert or something like that, right? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and the cage that she was in was Was at the guy's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah accidentally got locked in the cage so there was no one to get her out because he was hella dying on the floor and so she was just stuck which i kind of love because she starts out as a caged bird i Black see bird. <laughs> the the little insects that were coming out of his corpse she started looking at them like pasta the maggots uh cuz she was so hungry and just like delulu so i will say I liked the horror, like the descriptions I thought were really good. I don't know Bryn Weaver's background. I don't know her other books or if this was her debut. I'm not sure. She's a murderer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well written. (laughs) She did some great research. (laughs) Another autobiography. (laughs) She's actually the orb weaver. You could connect Bryn Weaver to like just a ton of, wait. Wait. Someone go arrest Wait. her immediately. <laughs> you have cracked it. <laughs> I cracked the code. Oh my uh, allegedly. 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 So she funny. is doing good work though. I mean, she's killing bad people. So she's really kind of like Deadpool. Yeah. Or like Dexter. This is very like Dexter-esque. But I was curious what you guys thought of like what she does. Do you agree? Like even though... Murder's wrong, but like she's killing bad people, so is she really right. a bad person? I think she's a hero. I think they were both like the good guys. Yeah, in our in our fictional world. Yes, yes, in our fictional world. This is all hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I loved how she killed her victims. Very artistic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Going after trash men that do despicable, disgusting, awful things. And the way that she like, ugh, the way that she webs or does that stuff with the eyes. I'm like, yes. And uh, our guy, Butcher, he also murders people, but he does it like ugh, so strong, so brawny, just with his mm-hmm. bare hands, just like pop, 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 pop. Yeah, and so he, we meet him because he's the man that's walking in to the, is it like a shed or a barn, whatever this is, and he's walking in because he was going to go kill the guy, but Sloane beat him to it, and so he sees her in the cage, and what Mm. I did like is that he did not immediately, like, take her out of the cage, like, rescue her. Mm -hmm. Like, stayed with her a little, yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as they said that he had, like, kind of rugged brown hair and, what was it, the Irish accent, Mm -hmm. I just pictured Niall Horan the whole time. The accent in the audiobook was really good. Yeah, it was. And all of his brothers, too. I was like, oh! Lachlan. Lachlan and Fionn. Yeah, they know what he gets up to. One of them even kind of does the same thing, right? Or no, it's just because he had like killed their abusive father. Something like that. Isn't one like a doctor of sorts too? Fionn. 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 Okay. And then Lachlan was the one that does the like leather work. Mm -hmm. Oh, what he did was he has like connections to like get rid of bodies and stuff like that and like clean up Mm -hmm. the scene or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, they're all from... Ireland they killed their abusive dad 
And ever since then, they just been murdering people, bad people. As they should. Part of me is like, yes, go off, kill these bad, awful people. But you can still tell that both Sloane and what's Butcher's real name? Rowan. Yeah. They both have trauma. And Mm -hmm. as much as they're doing a good thing, they also kind of enjoy the kill a little too much to where you're like, all right, you're still a little fucked up, though. Yeah, they they definitely are. Like, (laughs) the way that they talk about getting enjoyment and, like, especially Sloane. I don't know. They're they are enjoying it. Yeah, you know what it was. It was reminding me of Dead Inside. <laughs> Dead Inside. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The scene there was. I think it was about how Rowan realized that he liked killing. I'm pretty sure it was him. It reminded me of our main character in Dead Inside. The first time that he like had sex with a dead body. Him realizing. I kind of like this. Like, I felt the exact same vibes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carlos, what happened after um, Rowan let her out of the cage? He figured out who she was. He kind of recognized her and was like, oh, I'm a huge fan. But And she recognized him, but she didn't really tell him. She was, like, playing with him. And they went on a date. They went to get beers and... Right? They got beers and I forgot what else they were eating. Oh, it was ribs because... Oh, yeah, ribs because she was like slurping that shit up. Yeah, yeah. okay. Right, 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 and right. he was like, I love the way she eats the meat off that bone. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> A man has never said that to me. What? <laughs> I just love that he was fangirling over her. He was like, you're the orb weaver? And this is... Is this where he introduces the game? Uh-huh. Yeah. Because he was talking about some someone like or people in this one park or like woods keep going missing, like people that wouldn't like really have any ties to the community. They just keep going missing and mm-hmm. they're like, ah, the first one to do it. But then the actual game doesn't start until like a year later. Yeah. yeah. It's like every August. And the rules, the first person to find them gets the kill, right? I think it's just the first person to kill them wins. Because there were a few times where Sloan had found the killer first and Rowan mm-hmm. just like invaded. Oh, got him, yeah. Then, I don't know. Rowan reminds me of just like kind of a beautiful idiot in a lot of ways. Mm. And so when I had first read the trigger warning of accidental cannibalism, I was like, How? literally how (laughs) how could that ever be an accident and i loved the scene where sloan had the killer and rowan i don't think rowan knew he was the killer he didn't (laughs) and they were like invited over to the house and stuff like that rowan like gets drunk and drugged and sloan's like this idiot what is he doing and then um a platter comes out and he's like mm. she's just eating it up <laughs> she's like no it's human it's human it's human and he's like yeah I'll try some tries it and yeah Sloane's like okay one which why did she let him bite it if she knew she was gonna drop the facade anyway like drop oh. it before you know <laughs> yeah she ended up telling him while he was still out of it and he just like vomits everywhere which i'm sure you didn't enjoy rose no i don't understand how this continues to happen on our podcast (laughs) there was vomit in this and (laughs) the also because i listened half to the audiobook and i read half as well and i listened to that part and i was like hearing the gagging yeah i couldn't but good scene good scene just it was very good scene disgusting yeah. it was so sick how that chapter ended where she's just sitting there with the knife and i forget what she says but i remember thinking she's so badass she was a badass but the one thing i didn't love the semen ice cream could have done without that i was just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't even know <laughs> it was funny but it was uh, yeah i guess it was unnecessary did i eat ice cream that night yeah I still did. Any semen? (laughs) Oh, you know, I tend to veer away from that at the grocery store. Gotcha. Gotcha. Next time. (laughs) We're missing another character. Uh, Lark. Lark. I I like Lark. I love Lark. Yeah, me too. I haven't shared my full thoughts about this book yet, but 
the next book is going to be about her. And Lachlan. And I might, I might actually read it. Yeah. Basically, the the best friend to Sloan is Lark. There was someone in their lives that was an adult that sexually assaulted Sloan and Lark. I cannot remember. It was the art director or art professor. Um, somebody in the art department, though. Once Sloan found out that he had done something to Lark, she like lost it. And ended mm-hmm. up killing him. And then that's when she like, I think it's because he was the art teacher or whatever that she was like, I'll string you up and make your death all artistic and whatever. And that kind of mm-hmm. like fueled. Ignited her passion. Yeah. Because yeah. she is, she is an artist, but she, that kind of goes with her backstory of like not wanting to share her art anymore. Mm-hmm. And Lark was like, girly pop. I'm not scared by that. I love that. <laughs> like, let's, you should just kill all the bad men in the world. Yeah. And so Sloane just like always calls her and is like, yeah, like I've got this thing. Like I'm going to go kill this person because he's like, you know, a pedophile or whatever. And Lark's like, yes. Keep I know. Up. Lark is always like cheering her on. <laughs> like, yeah. let's go. So I'm almost wondering if Lark's book is going to be like, she tries it and is like, ooh, this is kind of mm. fun. I wonder maybe. maybe like helping Lachlan. Because his, uh, his thing is leather, but I can't remember. Well, I guess we'll find out how he or if he murders people with like mm-hmm. leather goods. Leather. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> leather goods. <laughs> I don't know. (laughs) How did you guys feel? So I really liked the horror aspect. I liked the goriness, the descriptions. I think were really well done. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about the actual romance? Um, I didn't mind it. I mean, I I liked it. I thought it was it was a a well done romance. Um, I did kind of hate that they were in love with like they found each other super attractive at the very beginning, but they weren't telling each other. Mm-hmm. So it kind of like dragged it out a bit and it was kind of unnecessary. It like went on for years because there were so many time skips. But I mean, I I didn't really mind it. I thought it was cool. Okay. Nice little romance. Yeah. I liked it only because, especially with both of them having so much trauma, it wouldn't have been as believable for me if they if it was insta love. Mm. You know what I mean? So the fact that they knew each other in such a short amount of time and Sloane was like, ooh, <laughs> he's kind of sexy. And then even Rowan just was <laughs> in love with her from first sight. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't disclose it after uh, a few years because, I mean, they only saw each other once a year. Yeah. So it's not like it stretched that much. But they right. were like still doing, or at least Rowan was doing – Things to like show that he cared about Sloan, mm-hmm. borderline stalking, but Sloan was like cute. It's their thing. Yeah. It's their thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it was almost kind of a slow burn, even though it wasn't. I wouldn't have liked it if it was insta love. I just, yeah. I think that the time yes. to build the trust was important because at the end of the day, they're serial killers so i think it makes sense Mm. it wouldn't have been true to sloan's character if she just instantly trusted rowan and was like Mm -hmm. i like you because she does have that trauma and she knows that rowan like especially with his killing tactic of being so physical it would have been very dumb for her to just be like I trust you instantly. I like you. True. You know what I mean? So I kind of liked the buildup. And then when they finally fucked, I was like, oh my God, this is so great. This is, and (laughs) there was just such a a release for both of them. Like the finally. Yeah, I do think their trauma bonding is what made their relationship so strong Mm -hmm. in the end. What did you not like about it, Rose? Because it's clear you did not like that. (laughs) Um, so. Not to sound like a hater, uh-huh. however, I felt literally no connection to their romance at all. I hated the time what? jumps and the structure <laughs> of this book so much. And I know, you know what, you kind of convinced me a little bit that it's not insta love because when I yeah, read yeah. it, I was like, he literally already loves her. Like the reason why he's doing this game is because he 
he likes her already. Like, mm. so, okay, I get it. It's not really insta love. Well, it kind of is, but it's not instantly in a relationship. But I feel like, yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think for him too, it's more believable that he would like her straight away because he's a genuine fan of her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he admires her like artistic serial killing and stuff like that. So for him meeting her, he already had that background of liking her. And then the fact that she was hot was just cherry on the cake, you know, or true. Yeah, cherry on yeah, the yeah, yeah. You're, you're good. You're good. Okay. Cherry on the cake, <laughs> right? The cherry on top. Icing thing. on top of the <laughs> yeah. cake. With a cherry. <laughs> With a cherry. I don't know. I'm bad at saying. <laughs> yeah. So for it was like way more believable on his end to be, you know, in that state of like, mm -hmm. I just I want to be around her all the time now and blah, blah, blah. Whereas for her, it did take a little bit more time because she did have that male trauma. And as a man hater, Rose, you should relate. I you know <laughs> I do. I do. I do relate. It's it, ha it has nothing to do with that. I just I think the structure of the book ruined the actual romance of that like their couple story for me. I feel like I got to a point and she said it was four years later, and I was like, it is four years later, and I feel nothing for these characters. I feel <laughs> like they have not gotten to know each other. They know nothing about each other. I get it. They need time to open up. I yeah. Understand. But it has been four years. So but they I don't only know. see each other once a year. But they text every day. I, yeah. yeah, they did text every day. And they were FaceTiming like all the time at one point mm -hmm. or voice calling, whatever. Yeah. I just, I felt, I felt nothing. <laughs> I felt nothing. The sex scenes were good. Yeah. But that was it. Yeah. I can see that. The time skips were definitely like questionable. I, I don't know if I like them. Really? Or not. Yeah. For me, it added like emotional edging. I was like, ooh, okay. Will <laughs> they? Won't they? <laughs> Is this, um, <laughs> what's our, what's our drama? <laughs> very, very crash landing on you. No, I'm kidding. I was going to say <laughs> a little um, spiced up. <laughs> It was just hilarious, like, hearing Rowan's inner monologues because he's just such a sexual freak. And I was, like, just looking forward to them finally having sex because I'm like, it's going to be so weird and crazy. I can't wait. It and it was. Yeah. I, I have a highlight from one of their sex scenes. Oh, God. Oh. Listen, one thing about me, I'm not triggered by a lot of things in books, okay? It can have all the trigger warnings, and I'm like, okay, I'll still read it. This – is what got me. I was like, maybe I'm not for the dark romance. Oh, interesting. This is at 69% of the book. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am 12. Sorry. So I wonder <laughs> if this is their first sex scene. I don't remember. But it says, Sloane's lips part. I spit the cum into her waiting mouth. And that is when I wanted to vomit. <laughs> was like how dare you if someone ever did that to me you don't want to feel like a little baby bird <laughs> i would burn the house down i would set myself on fire he wanted to relate to her she's a black That's bird crazy. so he was baby birding her yeah. yeah i get it i get, I get it. it i get it <laughs> you don't get it because it's art rose it's art <laughs> I'm sorry. It went over my head. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, you've definitely read worse, though. But not so in a sexual worse. content, like, it, or context. Like, if that was in an extreme horror, not while they were having sex, okay, I guess. Oh, <laughs> that's worse. But I don't know. I just can't. On one end, extreme horror version the person's not liking it. Yeah, I was gonna say on this one. In they the both romance like it. version, yeah, Sloan is Sloane's opening up. She's got the hatch <laughs> open. She's ready. I didn't think anything could get me, but it was the spitting in her mouth. His seed. <laughs> Did you guys have a favorite kill? The guy that she scared to death. <laughs> okay, that scene scared me. I was genuinely actually like scared during that scene. I remember a chainsaw. But I don't think they ever used the chainsaw. They just heard it. Because he was killing someone when they got to the house. Yeah. Which I right? have a thought. I have a thought what? about that. So 
to paint a picture, Roan and Sloan, they're looking at this this abandoned, not abandoned because there's a serial killer in it, but this like beat down farm with a barn next to it. And they're they're hearing someone getting murdered. So since they're still doing their competition, they do rock, paper, scissors and Sloan loses. So she has to go through the front door and Rowan gets to go in through the back. And so she goes up, They she enters the house and she ends up finding this room that just like has a bunch of cameras and she sees Rowan and like gets scared that he's about to get caught. So she like runs out of the room to try and like help him. And the serial killer like punches her in the face or something like that and like knocks her unconscious. I think this is the one where he kicks her. Yeah. And the boot the boot oh, yeah. is on her forehead. <laughs> <laughs> With the little Carhartt symbol. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so then he takes her and throws her in uh, what are those called? The like the cellar? Yes, thank you. The mm. cellar. And in the cellar. There's another, there's a girl, she's like sobbing, she's naked, and Sloane's like, just relax, we're going to get out of this, blah, 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 like, don't freak out. And then Rowan ends up finding the cellar, gets Sloan out, they don't take the girl with them, she's like... She's like, yeah, it might be, like, too obvious or something, like, with all of us running at once. So, like, we're going to take care of the serial killer. Then we're going to come back for you, girl. I think it's a good idea because if they're going to go fight the killer, what if she's, like, I don't know. What if she gets in the way? How would she get in the way, though? I don't know. She could have just ran. Yeah. Yeah. For me, Mm -hmm. the fact that they kept her in the cellar and didn't at least give her the chance to, like, flee on her own. Mm -hmm. Like, that just shows me as much as they're doing good deeds of killing bad people there's Mm -hmm. still there's like something missing because i feel like if you were genuinely like a hero type they would have saved that girl you know what i mean true true it's it's not so much solely for saving the victims it's more for the kill right right i get to kill this bad guy you know exactly because then when rowan and sloan go into the barn they just start making out like they get oh, all that, hot that's... and heavy. And then what breaks them up is the screams of the girl trying to run from Chainsaw Man uh-huh. manga. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, she's like running for her life. And then they're like, oh, well, got to end this kiss to, you know, get rid of this bad guy because he like kicked her in the face rowan is pissed off and so he's like Mm -hmm. let me take care of this but sloan's like okay but don't kill him because i like have something planned so rowan just like beats the fuck out of him and gets him like not able to fight back on the ground and then that's when sloan comes up and does your favorite part so when when she first walked into the house she saw that there was a corpse there and it was the 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 serial killer's mom that had been sitting there for i don't know how long but it was like a decaying corpse (gasps) and she grabbed the corpse and started like playing with him with the corpse and like putting it on top of his body it was described like a snake like her slithering the body up him yeah, and then she was doing the voice pretending to be the mom. Um, I don't remember exactly what she was saying. And then she, like, grabbed the mom's fingers and put them inside his mouth and, like, was opening up his mouth. Yeah, it was crazy. And then he ended up dying because of how scared he was. He had a heart attack. Oh, I uh, I loved that part. I was wondering because they had she had mentioned the mom's corpse or, like, the old lady corpse, and I was like, is that gonna come back? Yeah. And then it did. And I was like, I loved it. I thought it was genius that Sloan did that. And I was like, torture him the way that because I mean you can cause him physical pain, but obviously, if he's keeping his dead mom, dead mom. <laughs> <in the laughs> dead mom. <laughs> if he's keeping his dead mom in the house, then like he's got some 
some mommy issues. Yeah. So I felt like it was so perfect. Again, very poetic. She loves a poetic kill. And that's mm-hmm. why it was, it's not, it's not lazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Butcher's yeah. is kind of lazy where he's just so physical about it. And there's like not a whole lot of meaning other than the fact that he's like just enjoying turning bodies into pulp. Mm-hmm. Whereas Sloane is very like meticulous and she wants to fuck mm-hmm. with you mentally. And I love that. And she was mad that he had the heart attack. Yeah. She wanted him to suffer more. They saved the girl because, uh, well, kind of. Again, it's that whole like, they're good, but also not really. Because mm-hmm. they didn't, like help her get back to civilization. They were just like, okay, girl you're free and she just like oh. ran into the forest and they're like she'll probably make it to the road mm. and she'll probably be able to hitchhike her way back i'm like or she can go with you and be safe they should have kept her instead of our boy david our boy david Ugh. uh that was crazy yes we can give some background to david <laughs> he so he was like a worker at the house of the guy that fed, you know, human bodies and cooked them up, the cannibal guy. And so we thought he was mute and, you know, just vibing. Vibing, yeah. Captured by the serial killer, forced to work, right? Because they, they said that he had a lobotomy done, right? And that's why he was, like, not mentally there. So he was, like, eating all the, all the human pieces. And the ice cream. Oh, yeah, and the ice cream. <laughs> yes, but our girl Sloan was like, hey, Rowan, you need to do this one thing. You need to give him a job. Yeah, she's looking at David like he's a golden retriever or something. Yeah. She's like, you've got to take him in. And Rowan's like, no, I don't. Like, no. He's a grown man. <laughs> Whenever I first read it, I had to go back because I was like, is he a kid? But he's not a kid. He's a grown man. I'm like, call the police. Or or just drop him off at some emergency room. Yeah. He'll be fine. He was a good actor, though. He was a good actor. He really was. He was playing the part of just mute little golden retriever puppy. And Mm -hmm. Rowan, lo and behold, takes him in. Because Sloane's like, see, look, he can do stuff. Brings him into the kitchen and he washes a dish. And (laughs) (laughs) so it's like, see, he's a great worker. And Rowan's like, okay. (laughs) And so then as we see through the time hops, um, you know, Rowan's got... Did we ever even talk about how Rowan owns like a whole ass restaurant? Oh, no. And that's one part I hated too. Her coming to the restaurant... And then being seated. So Rowan owns this like really fancy restaurant in New York, right? Is that where he – or Boston? Three and Coach. I think okay. it's Boston. Sloan literally cannot stop. This is before their whole romance. Sloan cannot stop thinking about him. So she goes all the way to Boston. <laughs> <and> <laughs> she goes to his restaurant and the hostess is like, oh, oh, okay. Um, Here, I have your table ready for you over here, right? And – as soon as she sees him or hears his voice, she, like, gets scared and tries to run away. Yeah. Girl, you came all this way. What were you expecting to happen? Maybe it was just that moment of just, like, holy shit, is he going to think I'm crazy for doing this? Or is he going to, like, look at it as romantic? So she heard him and she was like, I got to go. I got to get out of here. And then we hear him get mad at the hostess of, like, you didn't tell me. And all of that. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay. Typical man getting mad at a woman for doing nothing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan, since he owns like this restaurant, um, he puts David to work as a dishwasher. And like mm-hmm. time just keeps going on. And finally Sloan visits again. And she's like, oh my God, like how's David doing? And Rowan's like, fucking good, I guess. Just like walking, <laughs> just watch, watch washing dishes. dishes. <laughs> and she's like, wow. She's like, that was my good Samaritan moment. Other than me killing serial murderers. Like, wow. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Until it bites her in the ass. This is why you don't help men. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> this is why you don't help men. <laughs> So I think something he's like going to fix something that was like wrong at the in restaurant. The kitchen. Yeah. And no one else was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When he walks in, he sees David and he's like, what the fuck? Why didn't because I guess someone was scheduled to like drop him off somewhere mm. and they didn't take him. 
and they're like what the fuck why didn't why didn't they take you i'll just take you whatever wait at first though is it because he called him so they were gonna meet up at the restaurant right after everything happened david like i guess held him captive and when sloan walked in that's when david like broke up with her and like dumped this whole thing on her to get her away from the the restaurant but gave her the clues in that breakup um, monologue or whatever okay and then when she got home she put it together that it was him okay then i'm remembering the phone call with the brother then yeah, not with that's when the phone call happened oh, okay okay she nobody heard david's voice well rowan did but... yeah so rowan did that's how the chapter ends um i forget what david says but david says, says something and then yeah. the chapter ends and then you're like who the fuck just talked because obviously david can't talk and then that next chapter starts out with david like saying i'm gonna kill you and yeah the old man was partially responsible for the lobotomy and stuff like that but you know i i love cannibalism now mm -hmm. so he was just tagging along for the for the food sloan was on her way or he like heard sloan and he was like if you don't get her out of here i'm gonna fucking like kill her mm -hmm. and then eat her and you're gonna watch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so when she gets back you know he's like i don't want you anymore very air bud and <laughs> sloan gets back to her place and she also has that camera oh yeah she has a camera in the kitchen david had thought oh. that he turned all the cameras off but she had a personal one and so she's like looking and she's like uh is that david and is he speaking and she sees like the body language and rowan was very like tense and like it just looked bad and so that's when she calls the brother and it's like, get all the info on David that you can. And then she's putting the pieces together, very like math all around her head. And she goes back to look at the messages that they sent on whatever day he told her. Yeah, it was something that they had seen when they were at the house with the other serial killer, the, mm. the cannibalist guy. And I think it was that same day that she saw something like a label or something. And that's when she, that's how she thought back to that day. And she kills David. Yeah, I think she comes in, she snatches the gun because I don't know where it is. And then they start having like this, this whole dialogue. And I think she's like trying to trick him saying like, oh, I'll go with you. Like, we can mm -hmm. leave. Because he was after Sloan, really. Like he was obsessed with her. But mm -hmm. what was his motivation for that? Sloan knew him because I guess he was already a, like an established serial killer with the name. Mm. And she called him by that name. Oh. Yeah, because she was like, oh, yeah, I I had thought that you were this serial killer, but mm -hmm. I needed to get more information before I was sure. But now I'm sure and all that shit. But instead of shooting him, I'm pretty sure she gets really close to him and like stabs him in the throat. Yeah, she does. Because she says she doesn't she doesn't like guns. Oh, our girly pop. She's just so good. <laughs> so cool. Like I would be I'd be Lark. <laughs> yes, girl. Kill that man. <laughs> I'll say that lightly before since I haven't read the second book. <laughs> does she end up plucking David's eyes out? I don't remember. I also don't remember. This whole ending, I'm like, I don't even remember. I literally just read it like four hours ago. <laughs> I don't remember. Carlos. <laughs> this should be fresh. Because <laughs> that's like her thing, right? She like plucks people's eyes out. But I don't know if she did that to David. Yeah, I wait. What does she say about that? She says, uh... Get fucked. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I loved when she said get fucked. Yeah, that was really I say funny. that all the time. She says that she plucks out the eyes delicately like a lady. Mm -hmm. Yes. At first, Rowan was like talking about how she gouges the eyes out. But yeah. she's like, I don't gouge. I pluck. I pluck. And that's like some of the silly, goofy banter that they have. Like anytime she would like do that, he'd be like looking at the eye sockets like, I don't know. This one looks a little messed up. And she's like, stop it. Stop <laughs> it, David. <laughs> Ew, David. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you didn't like the romance. I loved it. I really wanted to. I thought it was cute. I just felt no connection to their romance at all. I do think this is the one romance series that I will be continuing because I do want to read the second one. Yeah. I, I will read the second one. I will say. The one part I didn't love was when Sloane, after she had gotten kicked in the face and her shoulder was dislocated from the chainsaw guy 
um they went to Fionn's house. Oh, Rose. Yeah. Rose. That was her name. Rose. <laughs> as soon as I read that, I was like, Rose is gonna hate reading her name. I <laughs> hate it. Maybe that's what contributed to it because I hate when characters in books have my name. <sighs> that interaction with Rose and Rowan, I actually didn't like that. I just thought it was so weird how I don't know. I guess it makes more sense that she had such a weird off off the rails reaction to them coming into the house because she's like a carny. Yeah. I don't know if that's politically correct anymore, but <laughs> the carnival still happens. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's a carny. I'll say it. Um, and she just <laughs> was very odd, I guess is the best way I could say it. I mean, I appreciated that she was like oh my gosh, did he hit you? Did he hurt you? Blah, 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 like all of that. But also it is strange that Rowan doesn't know this girl and this girl is acting very protective of this house. Like, But also I guess if you see random people coming into your boyfriend, man friend's house, man that would guy. be strange. Man guy. Yeah, that's what she says. Or even just the fact that you know Fionn enough to be sleeping in his home you should know he has two brothers. You should probably know what they look True. like even. When he's not there because he wasn't even there, right? She had to call him. Yeah, yeah. She was basically like guard dogging that house and she was like, do you know Rowan? And what was it? Like his nickname his or something? His nickname when he was a kid. What was it? Pee pants or something? It was shit flicker. <laughs> it was what? Shit flicker. <laughs> oh. Worse than pee pants. Something like that. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was shit flicker. It, <laughs> it was bad, but I was just like, I don't know. She just rubbed me the wrong way straight away. I was like, who is he? Who are you? You know? I was very protective over Rowan in that moment. I was like, you should just beat her up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she's going to play. Oh, so then, Rose, you probably wouldn't read book three then, huh? If that's supposed to be Fionn's book, then you're going to be hearing your name a lot more. They need to break up. That'd be such an interesting duo, though. Like a doctor and a carny. So is the third one going to be about them? Probably. If it's a trilogy, they're probably doing all the brothers. All the all yeah. three brothers. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have... Ugh, they should have called it like, instead of the Ruinous Love trilogy, they should have called it like... The three and coach trilogy or something. That's cute. Not as like, mm -hmm. not as like dark though. Because they open, they obviously opened the other uh, restaurant, Butcher and Blackbird. Mm -hmm. So the three and coach still exists, or are they closing that down? No, it still exists. That was like his first endeavor, so it's still open. But I think he's trying to franchise, just not under the same name because he wanted this one to be like their thing with all the blackbirds painted around the oh restaurant oh my god and what was his tattoo he also got the blackbird tattoo right i did not <laughs> that part did give me the ick that little reveal i was like because it was like on his back and they weren't even i don't think they were dating yet no yeah because it was at the very end they were dating but it wasn't like he was showing her. They were going to cover up his scar with a tattoo. Oh. And so she drew she drew the image that was going to be the tattoo. And she used color. She And I guess color was something she never used before. It's something that she maybe used to do and then stopped after like the sexual assault with the art teacher. And You're then right. she was very like black and white and eyeballs and fishing line and yeah. Now she's a color girl. <laughs> love that. <laughs> I love this book. So then, Rose, what was your final rating? Yeah, I, I liked it. My final rating was a three. I will say throughout the week before we started filming, I was debating on whether or not to drop it to a 2.5. <laughs> but Are you crazy? After this talk, I will keep it at a three. I just feel like as a romance book, I just... I didn't love it still. But I'm going to keep it at three. I'm going to keep it at three. That's so crazy. I really thought I could convince you to get it higher. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I rated it a four. I also rated it a four. Okay, Slay. Yeah, I really liked it. Honestly, 
Um, it's not so much the romance that I enjoyed, but I just enjoyed the serial killing. Me too. I think that's what did it for me. Like for me, the romance was like the side story. I would agree. Um, the the serial killing was super interesting, but you guys know me. I mean, I love a kiss in a book. You I do. love a kiss. You want a kiss in every book. So. I do want a kiss in every <laughs> book. I just think at least one kiss should be in every book. <laughs> but it's like even a peck, you know, just a little. <laughs> but so for me, the fact that I could have my cake and eat it too, I was like, how could this not? be a great book how could this not so yeah and their sex was pretty bananas at some point yeah it was crazy besides the spit well besides yeah the spit. that isn't my thing but everything else <laughs> i was like that is crazy yeah the, the smut was pretty wild horror man it's for you i liked that it was also funny like it had yeah, those moments banter. yes their banter was really good and i appreciated like Yes, it was gory, but it felt light, not lighthearted, but like, but like it kind of was yeah, lighthearted, yeah. honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mm-hmm. atmosphere wasn't like really dark. dark and scary. It was kind of mm-hmm. like, I like it here. This is, I, like <laughs> I think I'll stay. <laughs> I think I might set up shop here. <laughs> Oh, Rose, I wish you would just like it more. I know. I'm sorry. But maybe I'll like the second book. Maybe I'll like the second book because I did like Lark. And now that in the first book we know Lark and a little bit of Lachlan, Mm -hmm. we all feel more of a connection to them. Especially I could tell. I mean, even without knowing the title of the second book, I could tell that they were setting it up for Lachlan and Lark because he was like, ugh. I have to help out your friend. Ugh, I don't I don't want to talk to her that much. I'm not going to talk to her. And Sloan mm. was like, you don't have to talk to her. Like, you don't have to connect with her. Just like, you know, help her out. And he's like, ugh, fine. And I'm like, you're going to love her. And I think I might like it more too because it's not like anybody instantly liking or lusting over the other person. Like, it's mm. more like a little bit of resistance. Yeah. So I have high hopes. Unless okay. Lark is instantly into this man. Ugh, no. no, we cannot have a woman instantly fawning over a man. It's the accent. Disgusting. It's that accent. <laughs> <laughs> like right now I've got fanny flowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did not help that I really did think of Niall Horn the entire time throughout this book. I was That's like, what got you. Yeah, I was like, I would love him too. Even if he was the first kill that Rowan did, where it was like the pervert that was beating his meat to Sloane getting herself off. Yes. He was like in the wall. Mm -hmm. I was like, ew. Because what? He like had the little eye holes in a painting. Yes. painting. (laughs) Yeah. Very like haunted mansion vibes from that. Um, (laughs) Because Rowan was like hearing moaning in the wall and like the (laughs) the skin. uh, And Rowan was like, but I also hear Sloan. So this is mm-hmm. this is the time. But he was pissed off that the pervert guy was getting himself off to Sloan because Rowan's like, I wanted to do that. So, <laughs> he, <laughs> to do that. so he goes after pervert guy and literally just like beats his face in like a pinata. And the way that that's described is horrible. Um just like pulpy meat like i don't love the description of pulp when it's talking uh, about a human body that i just, love it <sighs> that's horrible for me yeah. <laughs> so yeah that happened and sloan was kind of like looking off like i'm mad at him for like also kind of listening in on me but also he's defending my honor so what can a girl do <laughs> I'm just a girl. I'm just just a girl. Wait, I have a fun question. If you were a serial killer, what would your, like, way of killing be? Of course, theoretically, and only bad people. Theoretically, allegedly, fictional world. I feel like I would want to do something with, like, literature. Like, maybe, like, (gasps) I know what I'd do. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Not to sound so excited about it, but. We're ready. We're ready. Uh, I would take like 
classic literature storylines and I would like incorporate something with like what they've done in the past you know what I mean so the book would have to be very like dependent on that like if someone was an illegal whaler you know using the harpoons on the whales and stuff I would do something very Moby Dick to them you know what I mean okay. mm. maybe put a harpoon in them see how they like it okay theoretically, theoretically. <laughs> theoretically. this is all allegedly <laughs> guys I did come up with that pretty fast but <laughs> fictional world <laughs> Not true. It's all <laughs> fake. You can't connect anything to me. <laughs> They're pulling up news articles right now. <laughs> How about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Someone contribute fast. I I don't know. You would only go after men. Oh, I would only be killing men. But so I would be in a dilemma because I would just want to torture them exactly how they would like hurt their victims. However, I, me as an actual person in the, well, I guess we're in a fictional world. In the fictional world. <laughs> this is all fiction. I don't know if I would be able to handle that. So I feel like I would like kill them in like a girly way. Like, you know, in books when the serial killers use like nightshade, like the flowers, the poisonous flowers, maybe I'd use like poisonous flowers and herbs. <gasps> because you are flower reads a lot. I am. We're on to something here. <laughs> we are on yes. to something here. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm not that creative. I would just, I don't know, use a sword and chop them up into little pieces. <laughs> But <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! All right, katana, like <laughs> good choice. Oh my god. Yeah, good one, <laughs> really good one. No, but yeah, just no. That's good. You know. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad we got that covered. <laughs> Wait, my eyes are burning. I was crying. So we could call you like the skewer or something the skewer okay or or the chef since you'd chop them up not the chef turn them into sushi you got me good carlos you got me good so would you i think we can safely say that we would recommend this book oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean there was still a lot that we weren't really able to to go into too much detail on yeah because there was a lot Especially the smut. Oh my god. It's wild. I think the romance girlies, even the ones that like more of like the fluffy romance, um, I think they'll like it. And this could spark a journey into like some horror stuff too, if they like I agree. Find that they don't mind the gruesome stuff as much. Oh, we didn't talk about the epilogue. Oh, wait, refresh my memory on the epilogue. This guy was like watching I think it was Lachlan, uh, <gasps> Owen, and Sloane, like, saying goodbye to each other. And he's, like, hunting after uh, Rowan, I think, or Lachlan. He's hunting one of the brothers because... Rowan. Because he killed his, killed his brother. brother. Yeah. The brother that died. We don't know if they were killed in the first book. True. If it was before. Yeah. Or if that's like, because Rowan had already been a serial killer for a long time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the end, they had a kill. They had this guy all strung up. She like plucked his eyes out. Oh, and yes. he did the joke again where he's like, uh, it looks like you gouged the left eye. There's something in there. And like she went to go look and she pulled out a piece of paper. And I forgot what the paper said, but it was like this contract. And then he like got down on one knee and asked her to marry him. I thought that was cute. It was cute. Very, very them. Very on brand. Not how I would have wanted to get proposed <laughs> to, but very on brand for them. And I thought it was a really good, like, I don't know, a good Call circle back. back. Yeah, it was. I liked that a lot, actually. I mean, they they really are meant for each other. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you guys liked my pick. <laughs> I was already nervous by the way that you had brought it up the last time where you were like, I just finished this and I don't know how I feel about it. So we have to talk about it. And I was like, mm, I already knew I was going to like it and you were going to be a hater. I just something in my heart told me to be scared and cautious. But I you guys convinced me not to bring it down to a 2.5. OK, solid three, three stars. I can live with that, I suppose. 
Yeah, it's not bad. Now the listeners get to tell us if they liked it too, because I'm actually very curious to see if they liked it. Yeah. Please, somebody agree with me. It was going to come for you. <laughs> Don't come for me. I'll Guys, I will cry. <laughs> <laughs> come for her nicely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, we're also uh, going to be reading another book for next episode because it's my pick um this was a book that i had already read but i'm gonna reread it because it's been a while um but it was just very it was just packed full of so many things the plot twists were really good and i just i don't know i feel like this is a really good one to talk about it's a why sci-fi um And yeah, I'm excited. So read along with us. It is The Ones We're Meant to Find. The cover is so beautiful. So beautiful. I'm very excited to hear your thoughts, but I'm very nervous as well. I'm so nervous (laughs) because there is a lot going on in this book. I'm a little scared just because it's YA and recently YA has not been hitting. I will say I'm specifically nervous for Carlos's reaction to this book, but it's mine. I know. Anytime Carlos reads like a sci-fi fantasy, I would. Is it giving like the darkness outside us type of vibes? A little bit, yeah. Okay. The plot twists are definitely on the same vibe as Darkness Outside Us, and it's um, I would say it reads still like a YA, but if I had to put it in between adult and YA like new adult okay like the themes yeah right. the theme of it is definitely darker and more like philosophical I feel like readers that enjoyed darkness outside us would enjoy this book so oh okay okay I'm excited that's all I got I'm excited thank you guys so much for listening and watching my name is carlos you can find me on instagram at kingsome of books you can find me on instagram and youtube at flower reads a lot and you can find me on instagram at lauren h writes as well as youtube under read anything good and obviously you can find our podcast um on instagram at control your shelf underscore pod as well as youtube if you're listening to us on spotify and vice versa So, yeah, thank you guys for continuing to love and support your bookish besties.